A'uzu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Welcome to another segment of our Ramadan series In this series we are looking at the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to the month of Ramadan or with regards to fasting We want to learn from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we can observe our fasting successfully and we'll get the reward for it inshallah I am Yunus Hasan I'm a student of Al-Qur'an and I'm also a public school teacher. I teach computer studies at a public school and I also run my private computer school where I manage as the executive director of the school. Before we commence with regards to today's discussion, let's look at the previous question that we asked in our last segment and what is the answer to it? From our last segment, we asked how many daily prayers did Allah originally ordained upon Prophet Muhammad's Ummah, we the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or we Muslims, how many daily prayers was originally ordained upon us to observe? The question, some of us got it right, some of us did not really get it right. And the correct answer here is 50 daily prayers. It was 50 daily prayers that were originally ordained upon us until it was reduced to five daily prayers. From the narration, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before he gave out the prayers to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he invited the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to the heavens. That was a remarkable experience because looking at the case of the salah or the prayers, all other revelations had to come to him on earth. But with regards to the prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited him to the heavens where Angel Gabriel came to take him into the heavens to receive the prayers or the salah. In the narrations, we learn that when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had taken the prayers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was coming back and then Prophet Musa السلام, had met him and asked him, when he went to his Lord, what did his Lord say? He told Prophet Musa السلام, that Allah gave him 50 prayers to bring to his ummah that we are supposed to observe daily. And Prophet Musa السلام, said to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the heavens, that are you sure that your ummah can observe these 50 prayers? They seem to be lazy people. Could they observe these 50 prayers daily? And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was advised by Musa السلام, that he should go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reduce the prayers. So from the narration, we learn that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went to Allah and Allah decided to reduce the prayers to a, a certain number. And when he came back, Musa السلام, inquired and asked the Prophet to go back again because it seemed to be a, quite a lot. And um, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came back again, Musa السلام, met him for the third time and asked him to go back to Allah again and Allah will reduce the prayers because the Ummah or his Ummah would not be able to observe this number of prayers. Then finally, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, got the prayers to be reduced to five daily prayers, he came back and Musa السلام, from the narration still insisted that he should go back for it to be reduced. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, no, he's too shy to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reduce the five daily prayers again. He thinks that five daily prayers is okay. He'll be shy to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again on that note. Again, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran that he did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship him. That's to say that we are created on this earth to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our original essence in this world, that's to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to serve Allah. It is stated in Surah Al-Zariyat. A'uzu billahi mina shaytani rajeem wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudun Allah is saying that wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudun that we did not create or Allah did not create the jinn or the mankind or human beings except to worship him. Or Allah is saying, I did not create the jinn or human beings for anything except to worship me or to save me. Again, we understand that our essence on this earth is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. Any other thing that we do is towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The goodness that we do is for our own good. And if we do anything bad, it also goes against our souls. So for today's hadith, we'll be looking at some of the things that we are supposed to do whilst we are fasting and some of the things that we are not supposed to do. From the basic understanding, we know that when we are fasting, we are not supposed to eat or drink from dawn to sunset. 
that's when we start the fast from the morning, we are supposed to hold on to the fast up to the end, that's till sunset. We are not supposed to take food, we are not supposed to drink anything. And again, there are, so, there are some other things that we need to stay away from, especially getting close to our wives. If you are married, you're not supposed to have sexual relations with your wife. And again, if you are having issues with your health, sometimes it's advised that you should try and then break the fast in order to attend to your health. But aside that, if you are sick, you are not supposed to fast at all. But if you've started the fast already, then you incur some health issues. It is recommended that you, you stop the fast in order to take care of yourself. But if you think that you can continue the fast up to the end before you break at a normal time, that is okay. So for today's hadith, we are going to look at some of the things that we are not supposed to do when we are fasting. And one of the most important thing is that try not to eat or drink whilst you are fasting. And again, do not go close to your wife or your, um, your relation sexually or have any sexual desire with your wife whilst you are fasting. Another thing that we need to stay away from is taking medicine. Sometimes we, we know that food and drink is clear to us, but some will say that, okay, why are we taking medicine? The scholars are different in terms of this. One basic thing that we understand is that don't take anything through your throat. But some say that if you put medicine in your eyes, for instance, you have eye drops, some scholars say that it is okay. Some scholars also say that if it's uh, an injection that you are going to take to uh, help you, perhaps that one is okay. But the scholars are different with regards to this. But the basic thing that we understand is that there are things that you are not supposed to do whilst you are fasting. That is, do not take food and do not take drink. And do not watch illicit things. Be careful with the eyes and also be careful with your tongue. Be careful with your ears. All these things are part of the fast. So when you are fasting, try as much as possible to stay away from illicit talks. Stay away from lies. Stay away from untrue statements. Stay away from unnecessary conversations. Fighting, quarrels, all these things are things we are not supposed to do whilst we are fasting. We learn from the other narration that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if you are fasting and somebody provokes you, all you are supposed to say to the person is that I am fasting, I am fasting. Meaning, you do not want to engage in anything that would nullify your fasting. So today we are going to look at a hadith from Sahih Bukhari, the book of fasting, hadith number 40. It is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if anybody eats or drinks forgetfully, then he should complete his fast. For what he has eaten or drunk has been given to him by Allah. From this narration, we understand that even though when you are fasting, you are not supposed to eat or drink anything. But if you should eat or drink something forgetfully, if you should forget and take something, you should continue the fast. Just forget about what has happened and consider it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered that to you. Whatever you ate and drank within your forgetfulness. But if you remember, make sure not to continue the food. Some scholars also say that if you remember whilst the food is still in your mouth, make sure you spit it out if you have not swallowed it, or if you are drinking something and then you remember and that thing is still in your mouth, make sure you spit it out. Don't remember and intentionally swallow it and say, okay, that's it, I've forgotten, then I'll not take it another thing again. No, if you should forget, because sometimes we are humans, we could forget to take something and also perhaps because we are fasting, we might not be able to remember this quite frequently. Again, as humans, we, are easy, we easily forget. As humans, we easily forget. So it is normal that if you should forget and eat something or drink something, it is allowed. But as soon as you remember, make sure not to continue to eat or drink. Just continue your fast up to the sunset and then break it normally. Again, we would like to look at another hadith from Abu Huray radiallahu anhu. In Sahih Bukhari, book of fasting, hadith number 43. It is narrated by Abu Huray radiallahu anhu. He said, while we were sitting with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a man came and said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, I have been ruined. Allah's Messenger asked, What was the matter with him? He replied, I had sexual intercourse with my wife while I was fasting. Allah's Messenger asked him, Can you afford to free a slave? The man replied in a negative, meaning he cannot afford to free a slave. Alice Messenger asked him, 
can you fast for two consecutive months? And the man replied in the negative that he cannot fast for two consecutive months. The prophet asked him, can you afford to feed 60 poor persons? The man replied again in the negative that he cannot afford to feed 60 poor persons. The prophet kept silent. And while we were sitting in that state, a big basket full of dates was brought to the prophet. He asked, where is the questioner? And the man replied, he said, I am here, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Take this basket of dates and give it in charity. The man said, Should I give it to a person poorer than me? By Allah, there is no family between these two mountains in Medina who are poorer than me. The Prophet smiled. And then he said, Feed your family with it. Very interesting hadith. From this hadith, we understand that a man had sexual intercourse with his wife whilst he was fasting. So he came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saying that, Oh Prophet of Allah, I am ruined. That he has been caught wanting with regards to a crime that he has committed. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, What is the matter with you? And he said, I had sexual intercourse with my wife while I was fasting. And the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam then asked him, can you free a slave? Meaning to compensate for that crime he has committed in terms of fasting. You know, when you're fasting, you are not supposed to have sexual intercourse with your wife. So to compensate for that crime or that mistake, the Prophet then asked him, can you free a slave? He said, he cannot. And the Prophet then asked him again, can you fast for two consecutive months? The, the man said he cannot. The prophet is just trying to see what he can offer to the man so the man can observe that thing or do that thing that will compensate for the mistake that he has done. Because it is the law of Allah SWT that when you are fasting, do not approach your wife or do not have sexual relations with your wife. But this man had committed that sin or committed that crime. So for Allah SWT to accept his fasting, he had to compensate for that. And imagine how grief such a sin is or crime is to fast for two consecutive months just because you had sexual relations with your wife. And this man said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I cannot fast for two consecutive months. And the Prophet then asked him again, Can you feed 60 poor persons? The man said, Honestly, I cannot feed 60 poor persons. The Prophet kept quiet for a while. And while the Sahaba, Abu Huraira and the others were sitting with the Prophet, and someone brought to the Prophet a basket of dates, then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked of this man who had come to ask him the question regarding his sexual inter uh, relations with his wife or intercourse with his wife. And the, prof the man said, I am here. The Prophet then offered the basket of dates to the man and said to him, go and feed poor people or go and give it in charity. And the man asked the Prophet that indeed he does not know of anyone in Medina between these two mountains. There were some specific two mountains that this man was referring to, that in Medina he did not know anyone who was poorer than him, meaning he was poor, and he did not know anyone who was poorer than him that he could go and give this basket of dates to as a way of compensating for the sin that he has committed or the crime that he has committed. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, interestingly, smiled and then said to the man, go and feed your family with it. Allahu Akbar. Look at the message here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us through the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. Islam is not a difficult religion. All we need to understand is that let's get the rules and regulations and we should know that if there are some things that we are able to do, that is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there are certain things we are not able to do, let's know that it's not too late to turn back and then come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's repent from the things that we do wrongfully. Alhamdulillah, we hope that we've gotten a very good lesson from this story or this narration that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has given us. As Muslims, no matter what we do, no matter what mistakes that we do, let's come back again and understand the teachings of Islam. 
Islam does not condemn anyone unless you condemn yourself. Islam teaches us the straight way. And inshallah, if we are willing to learn, we can understand Islam and Islam will be easy for us to practice. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us and let us endure our struggles through this fasting. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease and goodness in our daily activities, inshallah. Before we end, we would like to look at the question for today. Today's question is, what's the previous name of shaitan or satan? What's the previous name of shaitan or satan? We all know satan, shaitan, satan, shaitan. We've been hearing that a lot. But what's the previous name shaitan had? Or what was his previous name? That's the question for today. Inshallah, the next time we meet, we'll try to look at the answer to it. But for now, let's try our best to comment at the comment section and see how many of us can get it correct. Inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best in this month and beyond. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our families, our wives, our husbands, our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. We those that are students, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to learn and understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and wisdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best in this world, the best in the year after, and protect us from the fire of Jahannam. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amen.